Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's uh, Dave again. I'm gonna show you a few things about cloning trees today. Um, you guys have been asking like crazy, all of my subscribers, you know, how do you do it? How do you clone all these trees? Um, you know, and uh, it's my rooster. That's a lie because um, I don't have a channel or, or fans or subscribers, but but I'm just starting this off, so we'll see how it goes, yeah? Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to clone a tree using the air layering method. This is a grapefruit tree behind me. There's several ways to clone trees. Citrus tends to be a little more finicky, and I've tried a few different things, and this seems to work the best. I had previously cloned my orange tree, but Listening to other YouTubers and tutorials, I guess I didn't wait that long, as long as you should. They recommend about two months for the roots to take, and we'll get into the details later of how all that works, but um, they lie. It worked on my pomegranate. I'll show you guys some footage of that later. Um, but I let this grapefruit, after the orange failed, failed. After the orange failed, um, yeah, I decided to wait a little while on um, this guy. So I had already pre-prepared the layering, but I'll let you guys use your imagination and kind of visually walk you through this. I'm probably gonna be sweating because this is Houston, Texas in the summer, and the sun's coming up pretty hot right now. But uh, yeah, let's do it. All right, first off, every tutorial, you need to prepare and have your tools in place. This is from the old clone that failed. Um, I still had the potting mix. It's organic compost. Um, had a little bit of mulch in there, organic matter. Really healthy organic stuff. You need something to dig with, of course. Um, got some pruners here. This will be for taking off the clone. This is what I use to prep it. It's a uh, take root by safeguard. It's a rooting hormone that assists in the that assists in the clone itself um, propagating its own roots, so you can eventually cut it away and plant it and make it thrive on its own. Um, gloves, you know, help your pussy. And uh, this is also what I use. You can use any knife, but this is my grafting knife that comes in handy. I used it to expose the cambium layer, which I'll go into a little more detail with you. Okay, so this is the part that I pre-prepared for air layering. What I did was, with the knife here, the grafting knife, I had taken, this is where we're gonna cut it. But about right here, I had taken the cambium layer. So essentially, you would be cutting around and giving it about an inch to two inches, cutting it again, and then just peeling it off, maybe shaving it back a little and exposing that cambium layer. Um, after that, you're gonna take a nice moist ball of some kind of a soil, compost, you know, something that will retain moisture, but not oversaturate. Um, maybe like a sand, organic compost mix. Anyway, you're gonna wrap that in a ball and you're gonna make sure you wrap that exposed candy in really well. And also, before that, that's where the take root comes in. Or any rooting hormone, but this is really nice stuff. So you're gonna kinda, I used a paintbrush and kind of dab that around there. And then you're gonna have a moist ball. You're first gonna wrap it really nice and tightly and saran wrap and you're going to tape it off at both sides to make sure it retains its moisture and then you're going to take aluminum foil over that and you want to do that because roots naturally you know need to think they're underground a uh, not be exposed to the sun because that can cause damage to the roots and all sorts of problems and you know it's just keeping it nice and kind of dormant in there so what we're going to do next we're gonna remove it here 
Um, based on my previous experiences, you're probably gonna wanna peel it back and check for roots first, but since I had already done my pomegranate and I prepared these all at the same time, I tried my orange about a month ago, two months into it, and it had some roots, but I don't think the roots were strong enough. And so that one failed me. This has been setting in for at least a month after that, so I'm pretty sure we're in good shape here. We're gonna take her off. I don't want to have my back. So we're going to take it off. You know, we're, we're pretty much in the clear right around here. So I'm just going to do that carefully. And here we have it. This, if you can see here, has already started producing fruit. What we're going to do now, before we even peel this off or mess with it, we're going to first remove the fruit because that's going to take a lot of energy out of the roots when the roots are trying to reestablish themselves. And yeah, so first we're going to take off the fruits here. It's kind of a waste, yeah, but um, seems like a waste, but this tree will be a second tree propagating much more fruits. Pretty heavy too, the fruits, the grapefruits. Okay. And we're pretty good on that. The next thing we want to do is pruning. So I've got my pruning shears here. It's kind of a mix between aesthetic at this point and trying to keep the tree even so you can replant it and it'll lay nicely. Um, stand straight up, you know, not keel over or anything, be too top heavy on the left or the right side. Yeah, I'm sweating, it's Houston, Texas. Okay. The other part is, I don't want this thing too tall either because um, since the roots aren't well established in the new soil, it's gonna get blown by the wind and tend to topple, so. going to kind of do what feels right here. They've said before, um, different sources say different things. Some say to take all the leaves off completely because the leaves rob the tree of energy. I don't believe in that because um, the leaves are going to wilt and fall off on their own. I think that they're still retaining energy from the sun and you should probably leave them on at least a good portion of them. So I'm just kind of eyeing this up here to see what I think will work. This is coming out pretty obnoxiously and I also don't want a new tree, you know, having a branch jutting out right at the roots. So I'm going to take that big dog off right quick. There's that. Okay. So Basically, anything obnoxious, anything dead, of course, too. Anything that looks kind of weak here, don't need that. Okay, this will be kind of the main tree here. These will be some branches. So. Keep it kind of even, too. You know, this is pretty intrusive there. I noticed on the pomegranate, I cut a lot more off. <clears throat> but, you know, this one doesn't need it too much. It looks pretty good. So, from here, we're going to have the potting soil in place and carefully remove this ball here and make sure we don't disrupt the roots too much. And plant it in the pot. Okay, the wind's picking up a little bit, that's cool. Um, I just have to be a little more careful with this delicate guy here. So, I'm just gonna use my knife here and carefully remove some of this tape, making sure I don't put any roots. 
switch might happen a little bit, but you know. That's how we're gonna roll. This might take a minute because I'm being cautious. It's like Christmas, yeah? Right guys? It's not like Christmas. But you know what? Hopefully there's roots in here because I won't just waste a lot of time. Yep, I see some roots. Have I mentioned I'm sweaty? You have foot stains? Okay. The foil's off and I can already see some roots. You know what? I'm gonna show you guys. Here we go. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'm already seeing roots peeking out here, here. That's a pretty good sign. All right, nice ball of organic compost in here. And first it was wrapped in saran and then foil. So now we're gonna remove this and carefully put it in the pots. Okay, so here we go. Right now I'm gonna have the soil this is just extra soil to put on top. But this is all prepared for it to be nicely placed in there. And you know what? Now that it's off the tree, I'm gonna take a little more off the bottom here. Because there are no roots below here. Probably an easier way to do this, but I'm not a fancy guy that you see on YouTube with the whole garden set up, the table, and everything right there. Well, this is my first time, yeah? There's that. Carefully. I put a lot of tape on there, but I wanted to ensure it locked in the moisture. I think I used a uh, trash bag too at the time. We're getting there. Just you wait. So sweaty. That's a looking nice. So we don't have an insane plethora of roots, but we have some well-established roots here. And that's gonna do it. It's kinda odd that it only grew on one side. That's new to me, but I think we have enough to work with here. So next, I'm gonna make sure it's in there really nice and firm. Centered up. Careful not to disrupt the root ball there. Fill up the soil here. And then pack her down, anchor it really nicely in there. Fill it up some more. Pack her down. that. That's looking real nice there. You're going to want to water it vigorously to make sure all the soil sets in really nice. There's no air pockets so the roots might rot. You're going to want to keep it in the shade for a while. And yeah, some leaves are going to come off. That's cool. Um, probably all of them. You're going to keep it in the shade until some new leaves really start to take off. And once the plant's settled in, would be in good shape. Yeah, so that concludes my tutorial on how to clone citrus trees, specifically the grapefruit, using air. Rain.